Hi guys, in this video, I will show you how to manage spatial entities. Now, spatial entities are tables that contain geometry or location information. To create spatial entities, you need to add a geometry column in the configuration, as discussed in my other video, for creating and customizing STDM data profiles. We can manage spatial entities on STDM by going to QGIS menu and clicking on STDM. Then scroll down to Entities and select Structure. However, there are other ways of adding these special entities. We can also manage spatial entities or layers of STDM using the Spatial Unit Manager located here at the bottom left corner of your screen. We can hide or show Spatial Unit Manager by going to SCDM, scroll down to Spatial Unit Manager. When you click on it, it hides the section on your screen if it was already showing and reveals it if it was not showing. The Spatial Unit Manager helps us add layers coming from STDM database or from spatial entities. We have two tables, a structure table and a view for the structure table. The layers can be added by pressing on the Add Layers to Canvas button. When I press on it, a layer gets added on the Layers panel and shown on the Map Canvas. Now, before I continue, let me explain a few concepts. There are different geometry types here. They include, number one, polygon. Polygon refers to an area with boundary. Most structures are polygons because they cover an area. Number two, line. Line used to represent things like rivers and roads on a map. And finally, point refers to the specific location of latitude and longitude. Polygons are created from lines, but the start and end of these lines meet to form that polygon. They are created by three or more points. In line, the start and the end of the line never meet. Lines are created by multiple points. Points are a single coordinate containing latitude and longitude. Once you have added a layer, you need to add or remove a record attached to that layer. To add a record, it is recommended to have a satellite image, a base layer, or a raster data. This basically refers to an image file that contains a location with a picture or image format. This image can either be a drawing or an aerial photo or satellite image. I'm going to add one so that you can see how it looks like. I'll click on Add Raster Layer button here. A window will open, and then I will look for the folder where I have saved my raster images. The most common formats for raster images are those files that end with .tiff. When I click on Open, the solid image fills the whole map canvas. Now you can change the transparency, but you have to put it below the STDM layer because you will not be able to see anything if you put it at the top. To do this, drag and drop the image name below the structure, which in our case is the STDM layer. You can see now that it appears on the top. Once you add the satellite image, the next thing is to add or manage a record. By manage, I mean we can alter the shape of the geometry or add a new one. To add a new record, Select the STDM layer, which is already done, then go to the Digitizing toolbar. Right-click on the empty space on the QGIS toolbar and scroll down to Digitizing toolbar, then click on the box to enable it if it was disabled. Digitizing refers to the conversion of a raster data into a vector format such as a polygon. To start editing or adding a new record, we need to press on the Toggle Editing button. This button starts the editing functionality. Once you click on it, you can see that more buttons are enabled to allow us to edit our layers. Let me add one more structure. To do this, click on Add Feature icon here. Go to the canvas, find the structure, Click on one point along the border of the structure, then move the cursor away from it. 
You can see that a line forms that starts from the point you selected and ends where the cursor points. Click on the next point. Notice that a line forms from both points and ends where the cursor points. Go to the next point and click, then the next until you have finally drawn over the entire structure. In case you've made a mistake, press the backspace button to undo. Once you're done, right click on the map. A form will appear for you to enter the rest of the details for the spatial record. Now, we will need to add additional information to this polygon that we have created, and at the end, we will have a feature or record created. I'll fill in this form quickly. If need be, I can add a supporting document such as a photo of this house just to make the data more informative. Once you're done editing and adding supporting documents to the record, click on the Save button. At this stage, the record is temporarily saved. However, it is not saved in the database. This means that we can undo or redo the record. To permanently save the record in the database, click on the Save button on the toolbar here. Now, let's say you have saved the document, but you realize that it has an error. Well, zoom in to get a better view, then make sure that the pencil icon on the toolbar is selected. Click on the Node tool here to change or add more points to the polygon. Then click on the polygon. Notice that the appearance has changed and that now the border lines are red. If you want to add more nodes to the polygon, double-click on the boundary and drag to the direction you want to adjust. In case you want to move the entire polygon, click here and then drag the polygon to the direction you want to move it. In case you want to move the entire polygon, click here and then drag the polygon to the direction you want it to move. I have now finished making changes to my geometry, so I will save it permanently to the database and then exit. I will show you how to edit the attribute of a structure record. Go to Structure. A structure record window will open on the bottom left corner of the screen to allow you to view and control the features if necessary. If you click on either of these rows, it takes you to its respective spatial record. If you want to customize this non-spatial part of the data, click on the row which you want to edit, then click on the pencil icon. The attribute information of this record is located on the primary, so click on primary tab. Edit the information according to your needs, then click on save. A pop-up window will appear saying that the record has been updated. Click OK. Check whether the changes have been made by going through the column here. That is how you update or modify textual data. Another method of adding a spatial record is by clicking the plus sign here. It helps us add a GPS coordinate as a shape. A GPS is a device that collects location information. Whenever information is captured, it creates a file containing that location information. This file is called GPX. Now, to add a .gpx file, I will click on Browse, then I will select a file. On the Feature Type field, click on the drop-down and select the GPS type. This is information that you specify when you start capturing information with your GPS device. There are three types of GPS information. One, waypoint, a collection of points that can be labeled manually. Two, track, a collection of automatically labeled continuous lines. And three, route, a collection of continuous lines that can be labeled manually. In this case, my GPX contains waypoints. Automatically, the feature is rendered here. This feature does not contain the exact shape I'm looking for, so I will clear all and individually select the features that I want to save for this record. I will do so by checking these boxes here. On the right side, notice that a polygon is forming. Notice that the Save button is disabled at this stage. This is to notify the user 
that the work is not complete yet. Once you finish the selection, go to the Primary tab. Also, when you click on a row, it highlights a point on the polygon using color yellow. In case you used track, you do not need to select specific points. On the Primary tab, fill the form, then add supporting documents if need be. Once you're done, click on the Save button. You can also add a record by importing it directly into the table using the Import Data module on SCDM. This is the case where you have created your data using another software. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.